When working with a document that contains images, one of the features many users struggle with is the control of the flow of the text around that image. Let's examine these options and remove their mystery. We'll start with this document with some generic text. Now I'm going to put my cursor right in front of a sentence within a paragraph. Now I've purposely made this one gigantic paragraph just to make a point. We'll go up to insert and we can insert a picture, a shape, an icon, a 3D model, a chart, a smart art object, a screenshot, any of these will work. I'm gonna go with an icon. In the icon library, I'll do a search for dolphin and I'll pick this one right here. We'll click insert and notice that Word inserted the image as if it was just another letter in the text. If we zoom in, we can see that the image behaves as if I had just inserted a letter at the beginning of the sentence. Now you can take this image, click and hold, and drag it to move it anywhere within the document. But if I were to take it and put it right in the middle of this Word document and release, you can see how it splits the Word document because it's treating it like any other character in the document. I'm going to zoom out. If we were to resize this, the problem is just exacerbated. Whenever you select an image within a document, you'll get this button in the upper right hand corner called Layout Options. If we click that, here are the different options that we have access to. The default is to use inline with text, which treats the image like any other character in the document. But let's go ahead and click one of these others, like this one called Square. Now in this case, when I move the image around in the text, notice how it wraps the text around the image, but it tries to maintain as squarish a wrap as it possibly can. In other words, if I click away from the image, you can see that there's this pseudo square that the text is not allowed to cross into. Now if I was doing something like this, I would probably also take my text and do something like a full justification. That way that square is even more pronounced. Taking the image and moving it around, the text does its best to wrap around, but maintaining that squarish look. What if you wanted the text to get as close to the image as you could get? Selecting the image, we'll go back up to the layout options, and this time we'll use this top option called tight. So now the text hugs the image. And it's pretty interesting when you move the image around within the document to watch how the text reacts to it. This would even change if you rotated the object, so we'll make our dolphin do a little flip. And of course it also reacts if you resize the image. Another one of the layout options is called top and bottom. So like the square, the text is not allowed to get directly up to the image, but no text is allowed to reside to either the left or right of the image. So as I move it up and down, you can see how the text just basically gets out of the way. Even if I were to make this image smaller, as I move it around, no text is ever allowed to the left or right, only the top and bottom. Now there are two other layout options which are similar, but one has a danger to it. If we go back to our layout options, this one in the bottom center called Behind Text, and if you give that a click, it places the image behind the text. Now this is a little difficult to tell, so I'll go up and change the color of the dolphin, and I'll give it a dark blue outline with a light blue fill. Now you can see as I move this around, the text is clearly passing over the image of the dolphin. What makes this a danger is if you click in the paragraph text and away from the dolphin, now the dolphin is almost inaccessible through a click. Because when you click within the text, you're selecting the text, you're not selecting what's behind it. Now if I want to move this or resize it, it's a bit challenging. A way around this is if you go up to the Select button on the Home ribbon and activate the Selection pane, you'll see on the right side here a reference to that Dolphin graphic, in this case it's called Graphic 3. And if I click that, that will reselect it. And so now I could resize it, I could move it, I could rotate it, again whatever I need to do. You could even hide it from the Selection pane if you didn't wish to see it. With the dolphin selected, I'm going to go back to the layout options, and instead of choosing behind text, I'm going to choose in front of text. Now you can see that as I move the graphic around, it obscures the text. There probably aren't many scenarios where you'd want to do this because then you can't read the text. I'm going to right click on the dolphin and choose change graphic from icons, and I'll change this to a backpack. So here it's a little more obvious that when the graphic is placed in front of the text, it doesn't exactly aid in the readability of your document but if I were to place it behind the text, now it looks almost like a watermark. Just remember if you have to select it, clicking here now will not select the graphic, only the text that's in front of it. So you'll have to go to that selection pane and click on the graphics reference. So that's the layout options button when working with images with text. If you don't happen to see the layout options button in the upper right corner when selecting the graphic, you can always go up to the graphic format ribbon and use the wrap text button. Now as a bonus, let's do something really weird. I'm going to go ahead and choose the tight configuration where the text will wrap as close to the graphic as possible. But then we'll go back up to wrap text and choose edit wrap points. When you click that, you get to see basically a map 
of where all the twists and turns and changes in direction the border of the graphic went through when trying to map out how close text can get to that image. But you can now take those dots and grab them and move them. So if you want to create some sort of strange way that the text wraps around the image, you can do that here. If you wish to add a wrap point, place your pointer over an empty part of the red line, click and hold, and pull, and that will create a wrap point. If you want to remove a wrap point, place your pointer over the handle, hold down control, and you'll see an X. Then when you click on the wrap point, the wrap point will be removed. So I could go up here and I could delete this one, delete this one, this one, and this one. And all I'm doing is holding down the control key. Clicking anywhere in the text will just place you back in the normal edit mode. So that's the wrap text feature. Hopefully now you'll have better control over how text wraps and flows around your images. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think about this feature, or if you have any suggestions for an upcoming video. And take advantage of our ever-increasing video library, because remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.